So in this survey, I'm acting for the seller of a property. The home buyer surveyor said there is rising damp, a definitive statement given without any proof, as far as I could tell. If you look at the geological site, you'll see that there are rocks essentially with no groundwater below the property. You have to have groundwater in order to have rising damp. In London, the groundwater is pumped out to about 60 meters below ground. Sometimes surface water can act like rising damp, but it's not the root cause of rising damp. So if you have a stream running through the property, you could theoretically have rising damp like symptoms. By and large, the problem is poor drainage, but it can be other factors. Have a listen to the survey. It tends to be damp at the base of all because moisture drops down through gravity. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to the video. You don't have to listen, or you can. But it's, it's always damp at the base of all. And a lot of people will call that dry, rising damp, but it's not. It's uh, just dampness at the base of the wall. Uh, as she. I wouldn't mind um, seeing your So it's important side. to note that I couldn't see the neighbour's side because they were out and the dampness is also on the neighbour's side but it's not consistent. So it's on the party wall side uh, which is generally warmer and not subject to condensation typically. This is uh, presumably the third bedroom. Below about 300 is dry. That's uh, obviously down there. It's dry next to the radiator, interestingly. I'll try the front of the house. The flat. The bathroom extractor fan is off. Uh, it was switched off at the isolator, presumably by the tenants. You can see condensation dribble marks down there. The extractor fan should be 15 litres a second. I suppose it was used. That's better. So if I put the the kitchen extractor fan is not ducted out, which it should be, so it's, it does nothing. It's of no value or purpose. Showing 99% subfloor relative humidity. There's high vapour in the subfloor void, and what happens is it causes condensation on top of the damp proof course, causing rising damp like symptoms. So it's bridging the damp proof course through vapour phase. Well, the, the good news is that there's no telltale smell or signs of dry, dry rot, which is a, um, often accompanies these issues. So there are no signs of rot, and that's the biggest risk of dampness in properties. What happens is, well, if you get humidity in the subfloor void, it can condense on the damp proof course. Uh, there's the damp proof course there. And if it condenses above that, it causes rising damp like symptoms. It's not actually rising damp, it's um, because of 
the source of moisture or lack of ventilation in the subfloor. Maybe, maybe that's not a bad thing, but do you see how it's yeah, you've got uh, over on, it. on yeah. top of that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's blocked underneath. Well, I mean, I can I can try and lift it anyway. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to to lift it. Establish it. So there's a subfloor vent there, uh, which is is good actually. That one's not so good. Uh, uh, this one is is really dug in. The ground has been has risen and actually water well it's, it's a bit shel it's sheltered from this but um yeah it's not ideal it's, it's fairly blocked and i think that's it and also i'm concerned about this plant growing here and i think that it it's probably to do with the drain but i'm not 100 percent sure but it's an easy and inexpensive thing to just um, drain out to the street from, from here as, as many people do so here's the plant growing out of the side of the building, suggesting that there's water there and probably from uh, uh, the, the uh, drain. It's probably from the drain. Uh, and the simple solution is just to have it run out to the gut of the... Just to re recap, there's high subfloor humidity. The external stopcock isn't turning off the internal water, which means that there could be a problem with the stopcock uh, and or there could be a leak, but not necessarily a leak. It's an issue with the stopcock primarily. The outside drain is is blocked is not draining properly so that could be the cause of the high internal subfloor ventilation or humidity and there's poor subfloor ventilation in addition there's poor ventilation in the bathroom uh, and it's running about two liters per second it's clearly blocked uh, i think it needs replacing anyway and it was it was off on here anyway because it's quite noisy and then the kitchen extractor fan doesn't go out. And I suspect being a tenant in property, it was probably having people drying clothes internally as well. These properties often do suffer from dampness to the front, so I, I check. These properties have a bit of a risk of dampness here uh, because of water that doesn't drain from the top floor. So I'm going to have a look inside again. And there's, there's also that corner there. Signs of condensation here in the past. There's dribble marks there. Uh, that's dry. It's, it's dry. It's dry there as well. You can't see the meter, but it, it was dry. Uh, so in summary, uh, there's water in the subfloor void from most likely to come from the both the front and rear drains. Uh, very simple solutions. I'll detail them uh, in the description below, uh, as well as online in the report. The I couldn't test the mains water for a leak because the stopcock was not working. Doesn't mean there is a leak there. Uh, and you had excess vapor from poor internal ventilation, especially during the time of, of tenants. Uh, so no major problems that can't be fixed. Uh, oh, and the other thing is the subfloor ventilation is, isn't great. But you don't need that if you don't have a source of water and you keep monitoring the subfloor relative humidity. So don't worry too much about that either. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.